If there's one thing I learned in my journey to becoming a better video creator and filmmaker, it's that sometimes the smallest little subtle tweaks can make the biggest difference. And one of those subtle tweaks that I've been a huge fan of recently is adding realistic looking movement to footage that was shot on a tripod. Now, there are a few different ways to do this and some are more noticeable than others, like adding pans and tilts and zooms to your footage. But today, I wanna talk about one of the more subtle tweaks, adding the hand handheld look to static footage. Adding the handheld look to your locked off static shots is gonna make your footage a little bit more engaging and a little bit more immersive. It's also a really good way to give your vlogs or any type of video where you're filming yourself a more documentary style feel. I recently used this effect in my video about Android filmmaking and I'm using it a ton in the first episode of Scenes, which comes out this Monday. I'll make sure that I link that Android video down below and make sure you're subscribed and have that bell rung so you don't miss Monday's video. Now, I've got some clips here in my timeline in DaVinci Resolve. Now, I haven't done anything to these clips yet except for, you know, cut them and arrange them the way that I want. So right now would be a really good time to take a look at our starting point. Now, that didn't look horrible. In fact, the images themselves looked really, really good. Those are from ArtGrid, by the way, who happened to be today's sponsor, but we'll talk about them a little later. The problem with the sequence is I don't feel connected to the footage. It feels like I'm on the outside looking in and adding that handheld look is going to go a long way in fixing that. Now, there's no effect called handheld effect in DaVinci Resolve, which I'm sure you've probably already figured out if you've gone into DaVinci Resolve and tried to find this in preparation for watching this tutorial. What we do have, however, is the camera shake effect, and that's what we're gonna be using today. To get to the camera effect, we just need to open up our effects library. We're gonna come down into open effects, and we're going to search for camera. And here we go, we got our camera shake effect, and we're just gonna drag this down onto our very first clip. And just to make sure that we're getting smooth playback, let's come up to playback go to render cache and turn it on smart. And now that that's rendered out, let's go ahead and play this and take a look at what we're working with. Yeah, that looks horrible. That is way too much camera shake. We, we need to tweak some settings here in order to make it look a little bit more natural and a little bit more handheld. Now I've already put out a video not too long ago, actually, that went over this camera shake effect and all the settings and what they mean and what they do. So I'm not gonna go into that here. All I'm gonna do is show you the settings that I kind of use as a starting point so that you can get that same starting point and then tweak from there. So let's go ahead and make sure that this clip is selected. We're gonna go ahead and put our playhead back at the beginning. We're gonna come up into the inspector and we're gonna click on effects and you should see all of your camera shake settings right there. All right, let's start from the top. First off, we've got motion scale, which we're gonna change to 0.2. We've got speed scale, which we're gonna change to 0.25. And we've got motion blur, which we're gonna crank all the way up to one. Now, I know some of you are thinking that I'm crazy for doing that, but don't worry, the camera's not gonna be moving around enough to really make it a blurry mess. It's gonna look nice and natural. Moving on into the shake levels section, we're going to change our pan amplitude to 0.24. We're gonna leave tilt amplitude alone and we're gonna come down to rotation amplitude and change that to 0.28. We're gonna skip over pan tilt rotation speed. We're gonna come down to zoom amplitude and we're gonna change that to 0.15. Zoom speed, we're gonna change to 0.05. And zoom type, we're gonna change to outward and inward. In the shake quality section, we're only dealing with the randomness. So randomness scale, we're actually going to move up all the way to one. Randomness speed, we're gonna change to 0.25. And random seed, we're going to bring all the way up to nine. 
And then the last setting that we're gonna change is our zoom to crop, which is going to be 0 0.085. All right, let's go ahead and play this back and see what we're working with. And that looks a lot better. It's not prominent. It's just a little subtle thing that makes it feel like there is somebody holding the camera and it, it just looks a lot more natural. It kind of feels more immersive, like you're actually there watching this thing and not on the outside looking in. This is exactly what we're going for. And like I said, this is just my starting point. You can tweak these settings to make it look however you want. This is just, this is kind of what I do as a first step. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Jay, you've got like four clips there. Why did you do that if you're just gonna show us this effect on one clip? And we're gonna talk about that. I've got a little bit of a pro tip for you. But first, I need to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, ArtGrid. ArtGrid is where I get all of the stock footage for all of my projects. And one of the big reasons why is because of how easy it is to find what I'm looking for. For example, in this video, I knew that I wanted footage that was shot on a tripod in real time. So I went into their search filters, I clicked on tripod, I clicked on real time, and then I started browsing. And then once I found one clip that I liked, I clicked on it and I got brought to a page where I was shown all of the other clips that were shot in that same collection. It was that easy. Plus, ArtGrid is one of the only stock footage sites out there that gives you access to the raw and log versions of their footage, which makes it super, super handy when you're working on a project and you're trying to match your stock footage with the footage that you shot with your own camera. ArtGrid will be linked below if you wanna check them out. And if you sign up using that link, you'll actually get two months free on top of an annual subscription which is super, super cool. So thank you so much to ArtGrid for sponsoring this video and for supporting creators like me. Now, what about that pro tip I mentioned? So we've got our handheld look on this first clip, but I wanna add it to all of these clips. Now there's a couple different ways we can do that. We can first go over here and we can right click the first clip. We can go to copy and then we can highlight all of the other clips that we want to have this effect on, right click, Go to Paste Attributes, select Plugins, and hit Apply. And now if we select these other clips, we come up to the inspector, we choose effects, you'll see we've got the camera shake effect on there and all of our settings are already dialed in, which is super, super handy. But there's an easier software way to do this and this method is actually going to allow you to reuse this effect with these settings across all of your projects. First thing we're gonna do is just delete our camera shake effect from all of these clips. And then we're gonna come up into our effects library. Let's go ahead and clear our search. We're gonna go into effects. We're gonna grab an adjustment clip and bring that over our first clip. Next thing we're gonna do is come back into open effects. We're gonna go ahead and search for camera shake again. There it is. Go ahead and grab that drag it onto our adjustment clip. And we just need to select our adjustment clip, come into the inspector and dial in our settings. Next thing we wanna do is come into our power bins. So we're gonna go into our media pool, come to power bins. I've created a power bin called adjustment clips. What I'm gonna do is just drag this adjustment clip from my timeline into the power bin and I am going to rename it handheld look and now if we go ahead and delete this adjustment clip here and we drag our adjustment clip from our media pool onto the timeline and if we play that back you'll see we've added that handheld effect to our adjustment clip and now what we can do is just drag this adjustment clip and stretch it out over all of our clips and we get a sequence that looks like this
So there you go, fun little effect that you can try out for yourself. Maybe make your footage look a little bit more dynamic. Let me know in the comments what you thought. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss my next video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.